Hey, welcome back. I'm looking at some rocks from about my favorite time period. I think it's Triassic. This is the Dockham Group in Northwestern Oklahoma. We're in that little divot of Panhandle of Oklahoma. And it's kind of hard to see from here, but the Dockham is a big floodplain lacustrine system. There's uh, some deltaics in there, little lacustrine deltaics. There's fluvial channels. There's a really good vertebrate fauna, uh, pollen fossils, lots of plant fossils. So it's chronologically well constrained. There's good chronostratigraphic data in here. And the Dockham is equivalent to the Chin Lee Formation. Um, if you've been around Moab, you've seen those beautiful exposures of the Chin Lee Formation. The Chin Lee is one of those units that's all over the place. It's in New Mexico, it's in Wyoming, and Colorado. Uh, just very ubiquitous. One of those big fan-like distributed systems that was flowing um, generally to the east, northeast, from the Uncompagre uplift and from the Mogollon Highlands to the southwest of here. So I've been wandering around just to see what's out here, and I came upon this beautiful outcrop. It's got that classic brick red overbank material representing a mature paleosol of a floodplain. That gives way to a mint green, more reducing uh, environment of maybe a temporary pond or an ephemeral pond, maybe a more perennial pond. And on top of that are some sands, probably a splay off a river channel or maybe a little terminal lobe off a distributive fluvial system. So we're going to take a look at this and see what kind of things we see in these deposits. Should be pretty interesting. I love talus slopes. Talus slopes are great because you get a nice sampling of the outcrop without having to go up and pull chunks out. Um, and just looking around right here, here's some nice ripple marks. Looks like there's some little um, desiccation cracks, little mud cracks here. Some pretty good burrowing, it looks like. These could be um, beetles, insects, cicadas, who knows. Um, more ripples, these are larger scale ripples, more asymmetrical ripples. Maybe some little mud chip clasts on it. Lots more ripples here. And here's that soil horizon. Look at all that rooting. There is a lot of rooting here. All these little oxidized, um, sorry, all these little reducing halos are from in place roots. So this was all rooted with little plants, little shrubs and whatnot before another deposit came through, it got rooted and then we're in a more active system here. So it looks like we've got kind of a well-rooted floodplain that's then overlain by this wetter environment, maybe it got flooded, um, you know, through subsidence. Maybe it was a dino wallow, like modern elephant water holes, who knows? And then the splay or the channel on top. It's kind of interesting. There's some modern wasps using this outcrop too. They're making these little uh, mud cocoons here. Those are the wasps that capture spiders and caterpillars and parasitize them. So they're actually making traces on our outcrop. Here's some more talus blocks showing those really nice ripples. Um, gives you the sense there's definitely flowing water here. Maybe not too big of a surprise considering we're interpreting this as maybe a, a terminal splay or some sort of little channel fed feature. But they're oh so pretty. All right, we're a little bit further north than our last stop in the world of the Triassic, which is down in Oklahoma in the Dockham. We're along Highway 287 north of Fort Collins, Colorado. You can hear the traffic going by behind me. But this is one of the hogbacks on the east side of the, of the uh, highway. And that lower part is the Triassic. There's the Mars information in between, and that's the Cloverly conglomerate up on top. So we have really the entirety of the early Mesozoic right in front of us. And the Triassic here is older than the Dockham. Um, that Carnian norian deposit doesn't exist here. It's been stripped off by early movements of the Laramide orogeny. A lot of these structures were moving back in the Paleozoic and throughout the Mesozoic and Cenozoic. So the Laramide structures are actually, they had multiple episodes of movement. So this Triassic's a little bit older, uh, probably Sopka environment or, um, you know, tidal flat, mixed tidal flat Aeolian. And you can see those really brick red deposits, just ubiquitous throughout this entire region. Cool. This is it, the last stop on our adventure through the Triassic of the United States, going from Northern Texas and Oklahoma all the way up to Central Wyoming. We're at Alcova Reservoir, just south of Casper, Wyoming. And in the distance, what you see is the red beds of the Red Peak Formation of the Chugwater Group, and on top, 
capping that ridge of the kind of grayish color is the Alcova limestone. Uh, it's an early Triassic unit, middle Triassic unit. There's Corosaurus, which is a Nothosaur, a little marine reptile known from the Alcova limestone. There's really interesting vertebrate and invertebrate traces from the Red Peak Formation. Above that is the Chinle equivalent, but it's not preserved here. And then an unconformity in the Jurassic. So yet again, thanks for joining me virtually in the field with one of my silly little videos. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it inspired you to get out and look some rocks. Do that, step away from the computer, get outside. Even if there's snow on the ground, why not? What else are you gonna do? I'll see you outside. Thanks for watching.